viewers, how the devil are you? Today I'm going to show you how to build a really easy to construct oil burning heater for your garage or other large space that'll warm you up really good no matter how much snow's outside. As you can see, the burner's inside. The uh, air pipe merely comes through with the hole. You could use a, uh, a hole saw for that. What even might be easier is to actually use square tube. It doesn't really matter whether it's round or square as long as it's feeding the air in. The lid, you would uh, start off with your, with your basic lighting. Just throw some newspaper, whatever in there you've got. Once it was going a little bit, put your uh, you lid in place, a lot of these drums have got a clamp, you could actually hinge it and pretty much there you go. This is where the air pipe obviously enters through the side of the drum. Uh, this is just a mock-up once again. I'm, um, I'm not, you know, really intending on putting it to use. This is just to, to show all my viewers out there. What I would probably do in practicality would be get another larger piece of uh, tin. I'd put the, the air tube through that. Then I would uh, seal that and then I would cut a larger hole so I can fit the end here and mount it uh, there. That way you would get a proper seal. I think it would be a lot easier to do it externally and um, add another piece of metal over the top than try and seal it direct on this metal. If you used a, uh, another piece then you could use something that was slightly larger and MIG or TIG weld it so you got a perfect seal and then mount it onto this lighter drum material. I think that would be a much better way of doing it. Whatever works for you guys out there. Now because I've used this drum for other things, it just does happen to have a hole here. Uh, I should have thought about it a little bit before I cut the other one, but it doesn't matter on this. What I would do is, if I was doing this, is I would probably put the chimney right at the bottom of the drum and then bring it up and out. Um, the reason being that would allow all the heat to sit at the top because heat's going to rise. It would also allow you to maybe put a metal bracket over the top and mount something like a fan. A, an old car fan would be good. If you've got uh, a moving airflow on this, it will um, heat the air obviously, particularly if you were blowing it down would be good so it all doesn't go to the ceiling. It's going to be, the heat is going to be where you're going to be active. Uh, and it would be a lot more efficient. The other thing that uh, I would do is uh, I would never get a chimney and, and duct it straight out a wall or straight up as I see pretty much you know 99% of people do. There's a lot of heat in that chimney. It, it makes no sense to me to duct it straight out a wall when you could be ducting you know 30% or more of, of your heat straight out. What I would be doing particularly if I already had a fixed chimney position uh, if it was the, the, the chimney was at one end of the the, the, the building uh, I would try and mount the the furnace the heater as far away from it as I could and then I would take the chimney up duct it internally and take it out the reason for that being that chimney is going to radiate a lot of heat as well uh, particularly if you put something like a little fan blowing along the length of it or something uh, moving air will take a lot of heat with it and you're just going to get a lot more of the heat that you've already generated in the heater uh, into the space that you want. Again, like I say, if a lot of people might have something coming out the back or they put it at the top, so the heat comes out of the burner, boom, straight out the chimney and then bang out the wall. The, the amount of heat that's actually being radiated into the building would be, you know, a, a, a quite a small amount compared to the amount of heat that the burner was actually generating. So so for me, the coolest part is going to be at the bottom, so I duck the chimney out the bottom, out to the side, and then whichever way that I wanted, um, and I would make the chimney uh, run in the building as long as possible so I could extract the most heat from that. Some smart people uh, on the internet 
have actually used uh, Pyrex dishes, which they've cut a hole and then mounted the Pyrex dish. I think they come through the back forward, and you could use uh, probably some sort of furnace cement to uh, to put them in, and that would allow you to see what was going on in the drum if that's what you wanted to do. I think that's a um, a pretty cheap and clever way of going about it. No doubt there's probably furnace glass of some sort you could use, something from a wood burning stove which would be larger and flatter and no doubt probably more expensive. But that's uh, a few different options that you've got for that anyway. Even though I've done a whole vid on this before, uh, it seems a lot of people don't really look through a channel just at the one vid and I still get a lot of questions about um, how I control the fuel on these burners. This is just a little cycle timer I bought off eBay. Uh, it cost me $10 delivered. There is a new one out now which has uh, multi-function and it's also got a digital display. I bought another one of those yesterday for, I believe it was about $10.20. So uh, a lot more versatile, two bob more. What this does is simply turning this pulse pump on and off. You can probably hear it clicking once the little light comes on. There it goes. So you've got two potentiometers here. You merely uh, adjust them with a, a little precision screwdriver. One is the time on, one is the time off. So I set the minimum time, which is about one second on, and then I set on this one the time off, which is this lag time now. What I've done is I've actually measured the amount of fuel this um, pump will move. Uh, I measured just that into a cup, measured it for 15 seconds, um, worked out how much it was, multiplied that out by the hour, multiplied that out by the kilowatt output, and by adjusting this time I can get the precise output that I want on this thing. You could possibly run multiple pumps, say for high, low and medium, uh, multiple timers, connect them all to the one pump, and that would be a, an easy way of doing it as well. Um, they um, don't have to be running all the time, the burners don't pulse very much with them. All it does uh, is it takes the, the fuel obviously from the tank and then drops it into the tube to be blown into the burner. By regulating the cycle time, the on and off, is how I get my kilowatt output or the burn rate um, for the, the oil burner. It's very straightforward. What I like about it is I can have the tank in any position. It will pump the fuel up as it will have to do here. I don't need any fine filtering of the oil because it's all basically a 3-8 hose so there's no little jets or things to get blocked. It doesn't matter if the tank level changes, it doesn't matter if the temperature changes and the oil becomes more or less viscous. It will pump for the same amount and this being a, uh, a measured amount of, of uh, uh, fuel each cycle will also always be the same. So once you actually set this it will just keep chugging away at the same thing hour after hour. This is only a small 7 amp hour battery but I've had it running this pump all day like 9 hours at a time and it charged up in no time. The pump only pulls a couple of amps and it's only on for you know maybe I don't know probably about 20 seconds per minute if that so it, it's pretty economical. So again that's how I uh, control my fuel and it can be controlled very accurately just with one of these cycle timers. Here's the fueling setup. As you can see, I've got the pump which is feeding out of the uh, the drum on the timer. Pumps down there, goes up to the air tube which goes into the to the drum with the burner in it. Uh, very easy, nothing to it. Okay, I've uh, primed the burner with a bit of oil to get it going. I've thrown a bit of starting fluid in, so I'll light it up and see how we go.
One of the things I love about this designer burner is they're so easy to light so hopefully this time it does the same and doesn't make a fool of me. Looks like it's going alright so far. can see and smell the oils already kicked in so uh, it looks like we're all good I might just turn it up a little bit just to get a little bit more heat out of it by just running the pump a little bit quicker okay so I'll uh, put the lid on it and see how we go I expect that's going to start smoking in any minute, but that just goes to show you the heat coming out of it. I've got that running right down low, about as low as I can get it, even though I've got the air intake on the blower blocked off. And I can tell you folks, that's really pumping out some heat there. Uh, again, I'm standing about three feet away and I can't wait to get further away because just standing here is near cooking me. The amount of heat coming off that thing is just amazing. You might also be able to tell with the burner in the drum and running at low power like that, even though it's kicking out the heat, the thing is still very quiet. If this was in a garage or workshop, you'd barely hear it. And if you could and you turned on the radio to listen to it, then you definitely wouldn't hear it. Not quite glowing red, but I could easily make that happen. Even the idiots have probably heard of the old saying, don't stick your head in the oven. Well, don't stick your head in the uh, oil burning heater either. You'll probably get a haircut you weren't counting on and the third degree burns to your face will just be an added bonus. You can see that's uh, running very nicely, entirely practical and completely boring. That's all good and well when it's in your shed, but on the oil burner channel we like to see a bit of fire, so let's have another look inside. That's what I'm talking about. Build yourself one of these fellas, you'll be able to enjoy the same 40 degree temperatures as I have been at the moment. I'm always getting asked about fuel consumption on these things and the answer to how much fuel does it burn is exactly as much as you want it to burn. The heat output is directly related to the fuel burnt, so it burns as little or as much as you like. I've been running this thing about 45 minutes, I've had it going pretty flat out for a lot of that time, and the way it's running now, as you've just seen, you'd want to be trying to heat a pretty big factory to be sustaining that level. Uh, one of these drums, which is 25 litres, I imagine it'd run pretty much all day in a normal sort of thing, and it would give you about uh, 12 hours at a 2 kilowatt, uh, 20 kilowatt rather output. All you need to do is go to the supermarket, buy yourself a nice frozen pizza, chuck it in there, and you've got an awesome lunch as well as keep them warm. So there you go viewers, there's a nice practical, cheap and very easy to build heater for your shed or your garage. Hope you found that useful, 
If you did, don't forget to click the like button, subscribe if you haven't already, share it around with someone that uh, might like to see it, and don't forget to comment or ask any questions. Thanks again for watching.